In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between partial and total correlograms and how they can both be useful in diagnosing what type of time series process we have present. So I've already introduced the concept of a total correlogram and we came across it before as a method for diagnosing whether we had an AR1 process. So I'm going to draw what a correlogram will look like for an AR1 process up here. And I'm going to draw down here what it will look like for an MA1 process. So the idea here is the x-axis specifies the number of lags and the y-axis specifies the correlation of the series XT with itself lagged. And the, the, the lag is determined by the x-axis. So for a AR1 process, we know that there is going to be definitely some correlation between the series and itself lagged and similarly this is just going to decay away so in the next if I go two lags back this is going to decline a bit further three lags it's going to get even smaller and it's going to exponentially decrease like that so that's what an AR1 total correlogram will look like if I now draw what a MA1 correlogram will look like it will look completely different so an MA1 process, if you remember, is a process such that xt is equal to some error et plus theta times et minus 1. So xt is only correlated with itself. That's kind of the zero flag, which we don't normally draw on these diagrams. And it's going to be correlated due to this et minus 1 term with the first lag of itself. So we're going to have some correlation between these two, two variables. And the strength of the correlation is going to be determined by the parameter theta. Whereas, unlike the AR1 process, which I've drawn up here, an MA1 process, after the first lag, the total correlation between that variable and itself lagged two or three or four or more times is essentially zero. So, normally when you draw these things on statistical programs, they will specify some sort of 95% confidence interval and each of these lags which are further away than one lag will not fall outside of that. Whereas for an AR1 process, perhaps the 95% confidence interval might look something like that. And remember why this is for an AR1 process, it's because we've got xt is equal to rho times xt minus one plus epsilon t and another way of writing that is rho squared times x t minus 2 plus rho times epsilon t minus 1 plus epsilon t so you can see why there is still going to be this correlation between x t and x t minus 2 and the strength of that is going to be given by rho squared and similarly for higher order processes so total correlograms are a way of diagnosing whether you have an ar1 or an ma1 process but how do you determine what sort of order of AR process you have? Because in principle, an AR2 process will not look that dissimilar to an AR1 process in terms of its total correlogram. So this motivated the introduction of a concept which is known as the partial autocorrelation function. And the idea here is that what we do is we find out the correlation of a variable with itself lagged and then what we do is we subtract that effect from the variable and then we find out what residual correlation is left over between that variable and further lags. So the idea with an AR1 process, if we were to draw the, uh, the partial autocorrelation function, there will be a strong autocorrelation at the first lag. But then once we've removed the effect of the first lag, then essentially there will be no residual correlation between the variable and further lags. So further lags of itself. So each of these higher order lags will actually lie inside the 95% confidence interval. So they won't be statistically distinguishable from zero. They still exist because of the fact that we've got some noise. Okay, so that's what an AR1 process will look like. An AR2 process, on the other hand, because so remember what an AR2 process is, is like we have xt is equal to rho 1 times xt minus 1 plus rho 2 times xt minus 2 plus some error, et. 
Whereas in contrast, an AL1 process will just be xt is equal to rho times xt minus 1 plus some error. So even after I've taken away the effect of xt minus 1, so essentially I've taken this rho 1 xt minus 1 to the other side, there will still be some residual correlation between xt and itself, and that's going to be given by this rho 2. So when we draw the partial autocorrelation function for an AR2 process, there will be a strong bar at the first lag, but similarly, there may well be a bar which perhaps isn't quite as high, but it is um, definitely distinguishable from zero. And then after that, and only after that, do we find that these bars are not distinguishable from zero. So here, the 95% confidence interval might look something like that. So you can see that partial autocorrelation functions are a way of diagnosing what type of AR1 process we have. If we have an AR1 process which has a partial autocorrelation function like this, then that's indicative of the fact that we might have an AR1 process. Whereas if we have a partial correlogram which looks like this one down on the bottom here, then that might indicate that we have an AR2 process.